This time on Atlas Unlimited. We try to survive in Dublin traffic. This is so weird. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, Get lost deep in an Irish forest. It's, it's completely incredible. It may not look like much, but it's going to keep us warm. An experienced sunset at the ruins of Glendalough Cathedral. Dude, this looks legit! <laughs> First, a little intro. We are Atlas Unlimited. Three brothers with an insatiable appetite for adventure. This is Keaton, the middle child. He's a daredevil, a little accident prone, and absolutely stacked. But as big as his muscles are, his heart is even bigger. Seriously, this bro used to hug all of our pizza delivery drivers when we were kids. And this is Kelly, tech savvy, stylish, and a ladies man till his wife locked him down. He's the youngest and definitely proof that our mother saved the best for last. And I'm Kim, a professional filmmaker, the oldest and the sexiest voice in the trio. And since I'm also editing, no one can disagree. They wouldn't know how. Keaton and I also harbor another secret beneath our saucy veneer. We have cystic fibrosis. Until recently, we were only expected to live about 40 years. But everything changed with a new medication called Trikafta. This new medication rewrote our future. But it's left us with one question, one we'll spend the rest of our life answering. When our limits are gone, what's left? Since the three of us were kids, we wanted to start a business together. Whether it was creating a fair in our backyard or selling tickets to a home movie. And now, years later, it's finally time to try something absolutely, positively insane. Atlas Unlimited, a travel experience company run by three crazy brothers who love each other more than anything. Would people pay to see that? No, I mean, it's free here on YouTube. But eventually, who knows? For our first ever journey, we're flying from Boise, Idaho to Dublin, Ireland. From there, we take a rental car for a scenic drive around the Irish countryside, down around Cork and over to Dingle, then up to the Cliffs of Moher, before returning back to fly out of Dublin. Four days, three brothers, one shot to make our first travel series. It's going to be quite the adventure. But before we can even set foot in Ireland, we need to survive the flights. Yo, 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 yo. We are driving all the way to Ireland today. <laughs> it's gonna be a long drive. Make sure to buckle up, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hope you pack some Pringles. Keaton works for an airline and is riding standby most of the way. Kelly and I rendezvous early to catch our first flight out of Boise. They call this the Atlas sandwich. It's everything a person could ever need to get a trip around planet Earth. Our layovers hypothetically give us plenty of time to change planes. But if you've ever traveled by air, you know that that's not always true. In Newark, we catch up to Keaton just before the most brutal part of our journey. You ready for this? You can't read this. I'm on a leg. I don't know where. 20 hours traveling feels like an eternity. And the three of us are brimming with anticipation. Finally, we look out our windows and get our first peak of Ireland in all its emerald glory. Rushing off our plane into our rental car, we catch a glimpse of a sign that reads, Ireland, the home of the brave. And we're certainly gonna need some of that bravery for what lies ahead. Keaton was in charge of booking our rental car. And one thing that he neglected right, to tell me was out. that the car we had what? was a manual transmission. Dude, I legitimately, I legitimately just tried to brake with my foot. I'm not even kidding. That was horrible. just a force of habit. Driving in a different country is one thing. <laughs> this is so weird. But I haven't driven stick Damn. shift in half a decade. I'm like losing my mind. And all the muscle memory in the world is not going to help me when the freaking stick shift is on the opposite side of the car. It just means my first traffic light. This is like bending my mind. Well, this is this is at least a little bit normal. It's a one-way one street. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> to top it all off, I'm groggy from the flight, and these narrow streets are closing in on me as I try to find my way out of Dublin. Man, you're really, it's really out of the pan and into the fire for you. Yeah. Like. Just when I feel like I'm finally getting a hang of it. Getting real close over here, Kim. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Yeah. That was the mirror. Did you hear our rearview mirror? You, yeah, we literally just tipped it. That was not me. I kid you not. 
Evidently, it's not uncommon in Dublin to graze rearview mirrors on tiny side streets, and luckily I didn't damage it. However, I can't deny, I am frustrated. But one of the best things about traveling with your best friends is that you can't stay upset for long. This park? They always find a way to shake it out of you. You think those birds know that they're Irish? Do you think that they like, they like know it and they're like weary of, of like traveler birds who come here for different seasons? They're like, you're not supposed to be here. Yeah. I've had enough of the city. It's time to hit the open road and let Keaton drive for a bit. It's a miracle we managed to make it out of Dublin in one piece. So the second we get a chance, we take a detour to take in some of Ireland's more scenic back roads. Ireland is covered with lush pasture. When they say the grass is greener on the other side, the other side is probably always Ireland. I'm sure the places that we passed through were par for the course by Ireland standards. But now there's no doubt in our mind, there's not a single place on earth where you can experience this kind of beauty. So. Dude, this looks legit! Yeah. <laughs> Look that at that, brutal. bro! Oh my god! Kids, uh, <laughs> this is I'm just gonna I'm cry. Bad, yeah. Yeah. This, this is, is ridiculous. After stretching our legs, we need to continue if we're gonna make it to Glendaloch by sunset. But we don't get far before something else beckons us to pull over one more time. A fairy tale Irish forest. While I was reaching for a spare battery, Keaton and Kelly darted headfirst inside. And I set off to find them. After a bit of searching, I finally see them off on the horizon. While we were on the road, uh, we saw this like clump of trees and decided that we wanted to stop. Um, I told Keaton and Kim that they could run after me. It's, it's completely incredible. We don't know what we've stumbled upon here, but we keep falling deeper and deeper in love with Ireland. They say you could wander for an eternity in an Irish wilderness. And after this, I believe it. Today, only 11% of Ireland is covered in forest. A far cry from the 80% that it used to be. But the woods that remain are something to behold. Current initiatives look to increase that number to around 17% by the year 2030. I'm optimistic that one day, we'll see parts of Ireland return to the way they used to look. While exploring the inner depths of the forest, we Sorry. came across what looked like a man-made structure. A small fort and camp that someone had built out here in the wilderness. It reminded us of a certain show we all used to watch together. And of course, we couldn't help ourselves. Now they say you, you can survive in the wild with only three weeks without food, three days without water, but only three minutes without shelter. It may not look like much, but it's gonna keep us warm. I get asked a lot of the time what it's like to be out here in the wild trying to survive. There's a reason man farms because living out here, <laughs> Kelly. I love how trusting he is in the stabilization. Now the, the moss is a good insulator. It'll keep us warm in the night. It'll keep the wind off of us. It's pretty cold. Uh, woke up about 3 a.m. I've been having trouble getting back to sleep. Anyway. I'll catch up with you in the morning for breakfast. If there's breakfast. All that cringe has made us pretty hungry. Time for a meal worthy of a bear. Situated right next to our final stop of the day is Casey's Bar and Bistro, where we chow down on our first authentic Irish meal. I got the beef. Oh my. Yum. Obviously dolloped with a lovely helping of that mashed potato. Got some carrots, got some baby potatoes. This is the cottage pie. It's a uh, ground beef with uh, mashed potatoes, Parmesan cheese, and then a beautiful side salad, as you can tell. So I got the bourbon chicken breast. 
Never had it before. Hmm. It's like. Oh my gosh, it's salad. It's like beefy, you know? What's the word? What's the word I would use? Borgignoni. Uh, the, the beef borgignoni. No, it's, it was, uh, I don't know. Oh my gosh. Something about the beef. I don't know. I can't put my finger on it. It's almost like a beef stroganoff kind of flavor. The chicken is just perfect. Is it good? It's like, it's like a, it's not super moist in a good way. Are the flavors just like dancing on your tongue? I really like the gravy. It tastes like, like just a thicker version of a good chicken noodle soup, I would say. With our bellies full, we walk out across the street to our final destination for the day. Glendaloch Cathedral. And I have to say, we timed it pretty perfectly. The sun is just starting to set, and the shots that we're able to capture are incredible. Beautiful cemetery. Glendalough Cathedral is widely considered to be one of the most important of Ireland's monastic settlements. What is a monastic settlement, you might ask? Which is fair, because so did we. They can be found scattered all across the world, but perhaps nowhere else are they more lovingly preserved than here in Ireland. During the early days of the Catholic Church's spread across the world, structures like this were erected as a sort of hub for the monks and nuns who settled in the area. Among ruins like these, it's not uncommon to find a chapel, a graveyard, or remains of old dwellings. While many settlements like this were subject to Viking raids, Glendaloch weathered the storms from its erection in the 6th century until the Norman invasion in 1214. These many years later, much of its structure still remains, a testament to the reverence and care the Irish have for their heritage. As the sun sets, we head off to our first accommodation, and this will be one to remember. Next time on Atlas Unlimited. This, what? this is Huntington Castle. And this is where we're staying tonight. I'm speechless right now. What in the world? Make sure we're not staying in like the barn in the back or something. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I feel like I just walked into an episode of Down Madden.